Here we go. Yeah, it's 7.30 in the morning, and you dragged me out of bed. Right. To, we need to go get our senior citizen discount over there at the Bob Evans. We've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> the buses come and go so early this year. It's awesome. And they um, changed all the routines. So both Jesse um, and the other bus that has that has um, Abby and Bethany on it, they go at the same exact time. So it's very cool. And, and you came to me last night and you did say, hey. Well, I was going to go. Be like, do you want to be like citizen, senior citizens and go to Paul Bevins? Yeah, really. And well, and I have to drop off a little present to the vet this morning. One of those little bags. One of those little bags to get up. tested, yeah, to make sure that he's uh, parasite free. Yeah. We've had a hard time getting rid of the, the worms with Arnie, but, um, you know, all puppies have worms, but he's just been a little bit of a tough he customer. Look like a puppy anymore. No. Well, he is. He's just 17, 17 weeks, I guess. But yep. so we're going to go to Bob Evans, have our breakfast, and then go to work. After we drop off our little bag our of little presents to the vet. It's awesome. Yep. Up and at them. What the heck happened to my Bob Evans? It shut down. Well, that's how long since we've gone out to breakfast. I'm so sad. What happened to Bob Evans? Hope he's okay. <laughs> now what are we gonna do? Oh, we gotta find a we gotta find a Denny's or gotta find some breakfast place that we can have breakfast. Where did all the retired people go? Well, maybe they don't live here anymore. Oh my gosh, honey, that's scary. Maybe we should just go to Starbucks and call it a day. I mean, you know, that's where all the young people are. Yeah, right. Maybe we don't want to. Maybe it, maybe there aren't any more old people. Well, there are I old know. people. I know. That's not nice to say. No, we can't say old people. Okay. Well, you'll have to edit that out then. Okay. We're seasoned. <laughs> but can you say it if you're one of them? Yeah. Can you seasoned. say it if you're old? Well, what does it mean to be old, right? I mean, is, isn't that the, you know, status of the mind? It, yes. it actually is. Uh, our kids and our kids keep us pretty young because we got to jump. We've got to stay. We have to stay at least. We don't have a choice. Somewhat hip. Uh, <laughs> is yeah, that I, what I we are? Hip. Are we hip? Said, you know, nobody oh knows what gosh. hip means, right? I know. We have um, to get we have to get up with the language. I know you were talking about the Brady the Brady bunch. Does anybody today in, in the comments below? It's on HGTV. Below, in the comments below, if you're a person in your 20s or 30s do you really do you know about the Brady Bunch they watch HGTV well I don't know who watches the girls HGTV do and who watches Brady Bunch though particularly you know because do they watch reruns TV land do you watch on Netflix or on Amazon do they watch these 50 year old 60 year old programs the Brady Bunch Dang. kids are our age right we know them because we grew up with them and they're our age but the young people today who are on YouTube, do they even know who the Brady Bunch is? I don't, I don't know. know. They do renovation projects though, right? Like we they do, <laughs> yeah. Like we just did. They were actually a very cool family for the 60s and 70s they when they were on TV. And they were. We wouldn't have dreamt of missing the Brady Bunch. Yeah. It was very um, cutting edge with that blended family. Yeah. You know, and I read an article uh, the other day where they never did talk about the mom's family and what had happened to her husband. Interesting. Um, they yeah. wanted her to be divorced, but it was too much of a controversial topic. At the time. At the time, and it wasn't even that long ago. Interesting. A and very interesting, right? And I know, and no, now it's so inclusive and, and acceptable and desirable for a family families to have you know, um, you know, to be multicultural, multi-diverse, and just, I, I can't say Well, that. the blended family Bl is what blended we're talking family. about. But I know, but today's blended families are, there's so much with adoption and foster care and with special needs, people caring for family members and, uh, you know, and other family members, and we have that. A lot of families do. So. Well, it is the 50 
year anniversary, I believe, of the Brady Bunch. And that's why they're doing oh, all this okay. with the renovation on the house and, and everything. So it's very interesting to, you know, see the blast from the past. And So we have a little clip from our German video. Oh, from yeah. Our German TV well, show. And so we'll show it here. Yeah, yeah. So people can see it. Maybe we'll play a little bit of the Brady Bunch theme. Papa Joel, Mama Karen, Hannah aus Korea, Obed aus Ghana, David aus China, Jesse aus Korea, Abby aus Indien und Bethany aus Thailand. The woman who came up with that idea, she was fairly young, the German reporter who did that. So, that was cute. That yeah, was cute. it was kind of cute. So here's our family in, uh, <laughs> in a little Brady Bunch montage. Oh my goodness, and it kind of goes with the whole renovation thing that we're kind of into. I watch HGTV every night. I mean, that's just kind of my hobby, and I really enjoy it. And so who doesn't love a little Property Brothers mixed with Brady Bunch once in a while? When I come up and you're watching HGTV, it reminds me of all the work that I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not calming and relaxing to me at all. I like, I like, uh, I don't mind people going for, watching for island bargains or beachfront bargains on HGTV on House Hunters. Well, some of those serious reno renos give me stress too. Don't worry about it because, yeah. you know, I, I can only take just so much of that and I start to get, I start to get a little, little anxiety myself, you know. I, you know, all they do is they rack up those numbers about how much stuff costs. Oh my goodness! And, and, and our, it's not and real. Area, There's no way yeah, you can do area, any of that. Five times that much. Oh my gosh! I, I, we laugh at the cost. If you could do things for the for the amount of money that they, you know, show you on television, yeah. you, you'd be you'd good be to go. To it, right, you'd be able to do happens. it, but forget oh, about it. Oh, here's a rotted subfloor. That's going to cost you eight hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's you can barely get the lumber for that. You know, and it's very uh, discouraging because like yeah. around here, you can't even hardly get anybody to do the work. Wow. They don't even want the job. They're so busy. Yeah. So that's it's good. A lot of people are out working. It, it is working good that everybody and... is, is working. And, and I think, you know, the real estate market isn't completely back yet. Yeah. And so people are doing a lot more renovations and, yeah. you know, good for Home so. Depot, good it's for good. Lowe's, it's good for good everybody. For good for uh, Harbor Freight, good for people that, uh, you know, cater to do it, do it yourselfers. And there are a lot of people out there. And I tell you what, and we found out with that, with that project with Jesse's Reno that you buy some good tools and I use some tools that we've had for 20 years, but I got to buy some new tools and uh, it made the job go. Well, I think you better. have to have at least one new tool to do anything. That's what motivates you. You're not interested unless there's something in it for you. And if you get a new gizmo, new then gizmos are, are good when you, you need because a it's reason fun. to buy them, right? You know, and uh, so and then you get to use them, and then more ideas come, right? Because well, so here we are. I just yeah, wanted yeah. a little breakfast, and now we're stuck in Beltway traffic. We're what going the heck? To Denny's. Where's so it's at the next exit? Oh my gosh, this is. Turning into an ordeal, honey. Yeah, I know. A oh, bigger ordeal. Are we going to be able to get home in time to do our yeah, work? Yeah, of course. It's, it took us an extra 10 minutes, but we're good. I never have to we deal with traffic. Hannah and Daddy do it every day. So speaking of that, um, are we ever going to be empty nesters? No. No. <laughs> are you just now figuring that out? Oh, no, a lot of people ask that. Uh, question and what would no. we do if we were empty nesters? We are going to take care of these children, children, young adults actually now, I say children, yeah. but we're going to be taking care of them for as, as long, long as, as we, can. we possibly can. Yeah. They're our kids, this is our family, and we're not giving up the the role. I mean, this is our life. This is what right. keeps us going every yeah. day. And it was a decision, and we knew that as we started adopting kids with needs, you know mm -hmm. that whether or not they're going to, you know, be um, able to, uh, you be independent. You know, you, you know when they're. Well, you don't always know that ahead of time. You, you don't know ahead of time. You usually you don't do. know that until they're home. You <coughs> right. know, and you have to sign uh, waivers when you adopt a child to that you understand that just like when you give birth to a child, you don't know what might right. what what might happen, and we really didn't know. Um, with Hannah or Jesse, we had a better idea with Abby, 
And of yeah. course, with Obed, we we knew. Now, even with Obed, though, we didn't know everything. Yeah. They didn't. The the yeah. social workers and even the birth family didn't know everything that was wrong. But no. you could, you know, obviously it was going to be pretty um, pretty extreme. And so, and it's all good because they are who they are, and we just we just take it a day at a time. Right. And um, if we have to have someone live in our house with us at some point, that would probably be the first we're gonna, transition. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna talk about what happens when we die someday. Well, don't talk we're about that do, now because no, we're in no, no, bumper to bumper okay, traffic together. Have, that makes that. me nervous, it gives me a twitch. Okay, so let's not talk about have, that. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> talk about that. We're gonna talk about that in another video. There are some planning underway. Right. There's some things we're working on. We, there, you know, big things that have to happen. And it's constantly evoving and changing with circumstances but, but for today, and the needs of the kids. And but it's today, crazy. The idea of, you know, we go by all these 55 plus and 62 plus communities of people playing golf and playing. Yeah, we're not going to live there. You know, <laughs> bar, bar, you know uh, all their backgammon games and clubs and stuff like that. And uh, that's that's. You know, it's not, not for not, us. Not, not for us. Uh, nothing wrong with that for a lot of people. Some people set their hearts when they're 20 years old. They go into the workplace and think, I'm going to retire when I'm 50 or 55 or whatever and live a life, um, you know, of a retiree as early as possible. And I don't think a retiree's life is uh, was something that we... Um, it no, was, it doesn't. It was something that we were. It doesn't that, appeal to either one of us. I mean, we're both very hard workers, and we get a lot of satisfaction out of doing work. Yeah, we actual do. work and being productive and all that. So, I mean, we have a good time doing that. Again, nothing and, wrong with people that no. retire and, and and can go to Starbucks every day or do whatever they life. And you know, when when people talk about living your best life now, right? You know, your best life is your best life. You get to pick. You get to decide individually what you, you know, and your um, spouse and family want to do. And in our case, part of that process is, you know, we wanted a large family. We didn't start until late in the day or late in our process. So, um, you know, here we are. We started adopting. Hannah talked about us adopting when we were... 40. We were, we're 40. We had Joel right before um, I turned 30, and we spent the next 10 years going through all the infertility treatments and everything, and, you know, as, as people typically do, and um, so it, it was a long process, and, and uh, Obed and Bethany came. We were almost 50 when Obed and Bethany joined our family, so it's been a process. And um, it's a good one. Okay, let's go find Denny's. Let's do that. All right, what do you have there? I have, I have a sample. <laughs> <laughs> so we finished with our uh, breakfast at Denny's. It was very good. Do you have your and um, the coffee wallet? was great. We're gonna have to pay them. We're oh, gonna we have, have to, to give them? this to them and pay okay, them. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna go to the ho to the doctor's office here okay. for the vet and drop off the goodies. What a racket! You take my dog's poop and charge me forty dollars. Forty bucks <laughs> to see. I mean, and you have to trust them whether or not and then they're, they're gonna telling you, no, nope, nope, you need me, another hundred bucks for medicine. They're going to charge me a hundred dollars for the meds because they'll tell me that they're... Right. Nope, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> a never-ending oh hoop-jumping yeah, cycle. I think um, initially, I think pets are more expensive than children. Yeah. In the long run, it's not true. But... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, well.